Well, I'm glad that's what Jesus does. Amen. He washes us whiter than snow. He takes out all the filth. But here's the problem. There are so many Christians who live defeated lives because they don't know who and what they are in Jesus Christ. They're like a lot of men. You know, most men struggle with how to be a husband because they just have never been taught. Really. They've never been taught. That's why we do these marriage seminars to help the husbands and the wives. But, but seriously, think about it. What do we end up doing? We end up faking it. Because we don't know. No one's taught us. We, we are doing the best we can. And so a lot of Christians are discouraged and defeated and they don't know any better. But that's what we're wanting to do today as we study Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. So if you'll take your Bibles, today, fake ID. Fake ID. Galatians 6, 7 through 10. And I'm going to be as quick as possible so you listen fast. Let's all stand as we read the Word of God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Thank you for your word. It's infallible. Now, God, I pray that you would anoint me, that the infallibility of the word of God, Lord, would be seen. There is no error. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We've been talking about the power of identity. I want you to listen. I wish every student was here today. I wish every young person was here. Uh, a lot of people struggle. And uh, there, I hope you're listening very carefully what I'm about to say. We've been dealing with this subject for some time, the power of identity. That how we look at ourselves, what we understand to be true of who we are, determines so much of our life. It determines our behavior it goes along in determining how we respond to other people. It ultimately sets the trajectory of our lives. Identity is huge. It's huge. We often want to put the focus on our behavior. Uh, that is what we do. This is what we don't do. But that comes out of our identity. Behavior flows from identity. Who are we really. What is our identity? Who we really are. When you know who you are, you will know what to do. Fake identity is not about who we are, but who we're not. The reality is that many have lived uh, life out of a false identity, a fake identity. Some, some, something that has been told to us, about us, uh, we somehow believed it. Maybe it was not even true, but we end up living out what we believe about ourselves, even though it is not true at all about us. Satan is right there in all of his deception, which I believe is his sharpest tool to deceive he loves fake IDs. There are many expressions of imitation Christianity. Listen, that we can try to pass off is the real thing. Good wishes can be mistaken for prayer. Success can be misconstrued as spiritual achievement. Inspirational bumper stickers and symbols can be seen as evangelism. Uh, excellent music can cover for authentic worship of heart. Humorous or emotional stories can pass for inspired preaching. Christian cliches can be handed out as biblical wisdom. An attractive personality can be, be mistaken for a spirit-filled life. The real thing is this. It's easy. Jesus is the real thing. And all you and I need to learn is to be like Jesus. You don't need to learn to be like anybody else. Are y'all listening to me this morning? Amen. Oh, God spoke to my heart deeply about this. Life is more about how you see you than how others see you. Are y'all listening? Life is more 
about how you see you than how others see you. And if you see yourself in Christ, that's a faith identity, not a fake identity. Are y'all listening? It's important that you get this day. i got to be quick here, but I want you to listen, because God has placed in these scriptures, along with many others, but right here, we see some powerful principles. The principle of sowing and reaping. You see, you reap only what you sow. You reap the same as you sow. You reap later than you sow. You reap more than you sow. It's amazing how many people want to plant unrighteousness, but expect God's blessings. They want to plant bad, but they want to harvest good. They want to sow seeds of wrong, but rather they want to receive a harvest that is right. But that's not how God's principles work. That's something you need to know about sowing. Once you sow whatever you sow, it will grow naturally. In other words, uh, you do have choices, but you never have a choice about the consequences of your choice. You do have a choice. You can sow to the flesh or you can sow to the spirit. It's your choice, right? You choose every day. And by the way, young folks, just always remember this. The choice you make makes you. That defines you. The choices. So decisions are very big. What you have sown will push up through the ground someday. It's the principle cause and effect. It's the sowing and reaping. So here we go. Number one, are you a floater? Or are you a follower? Are you with me? Are you a floater or a follower? Now I'm trying to get you to think this morning because I'm telling you the majority of people are just floating. I mean, they say they follow Jesus, but they're floaters. I want to talk about a word this morning. Intelligence. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How you think says a lot about what you will do. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be not deceived, verse 7 says. Be not deceived. Don't have a fake ID. Are you a floater or are you a follower? Anyone can float along life's way. Lazy people are floaters. They're deceived. I mean, anybody can get in a canoe and go downstream. That's the way the current carries you, right? It takes a real man, it takes a real woman to know how to pedal upstream. And when you become a Christian, you need to understand this. You're going against the current of life. You're going against the world. Are y'all listening this morning? It's very important that you understand this. Always trying to live off someone else's faith. You know people like that? Instead of thinking for themselves, spending the time needed in God's Word, they float on someone else's spiritual coattail. Look up just a few verses there. Look at verse 4 of chapter 6. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. In the light of God's will and not in the shadows of somebody else's achievements. All a floater does is to go along with his peers, just wants to get along with the crowd, impress someone, floating wherever the current will carry them, floating in and out of church, floating from one ministry to another, never content with where God has placed them, where they could really, I mean, thrive. Many people are just trying to survive. God wants you to thrive. If you're always Looking for it, you're going to miss God. So like the guy who was asked, he played a cello, and someone asked him, said, well, why is it that everyone else moves their fingers and you never do move, and you play beautifully? He said, well, they're looking for it, and I found it. You know, I found everything I need in Jesus. The Bible says you are complete in the Godhead bodily. I'm telling you, friend, when Jesus saved you, he saved you with a purpose. He's given you a spiritual gift. And I promise you, instead of floating all over the place trying to find it, just go to Jesus and say, what is it that you've called me to do? What is my spiritual gift? And then you bloom, you blossom where God has planted you. Can I get a witness? I'm telling you something. This is a great verse, verse 4. I'm not preaching it today. But it says, rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Floating from one place to another. I think there's a reason 
you might want to write this down, at the middle verse of the Bible. I want you to learn something today. The middle verse of the whole Bible is Psalm 118.8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Some of y'all knew that. I, I saw a person quoting that as I said it. That's a good verse to know. It is better for you to be the man of God God's called you to be because you trust in the Lord, not because you followed someone else. Not because you're on someone else's spiritual coattail. Folks, you can't live off someone else's faith. It's got to be your time spending the Word of God. It's got to be your time in prayer. If all you're getting is coming to church on Sunday, I'll go ahead and tell you, your boat's going to sink. You're not even going to float. I'm telling you today, we are to be intelligent people. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I'll tell you, there are preachers, there are teachers, and many Christians do not rightly divide the word of God because they don't take the time to get in it and study it for themselves. Amen. They think just because some preacher said it, it's right. No, friend, and I'm, I'll be honest with you. I, I want to tell you what I believe. I believe this Bible from Genesis to Maps. I do. I do. I believe everything in it. I do. I mean, I, I believe it is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. I, I believe. And if God said it, that settles it. But here's the thing. you got to make sure that's what God said. Amen? Just like I said about this scripture today. Really, the context here in sowing and reaping, if you really want to have a blessed life, then sow the right seed. Amen? So you need to be intelligent about it. All right, the second word I want to give you is the word identification. We're dealing with that. By the way, Jesus said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself. We're, we're so big on ourselves today. We really are. We're living in that day. And people don't know who they are anymore. Man, I'll tell you, our society has lost it when it comes to identification. But here's the thing I want you to hear today. The Bible says in verse 7, God is not mocked. You know the actual understanding of that is this. God cannot be mocked. To expect anything else would make a mockery of God. There is no fake ID, ID with God. He knows who and whose we really are. He knows our thoughts, the Bible says, and even the intents of our heart. Genesis 1.11 is a powerful verse about sowing. And Jesus said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. I love that. Upon the earth, and it was so. A locked-in likeness. Never, never, Jesus said, you gather figs from an olive tree or corn from wheat. Expect it in the cornfield to harvest corn and expect it in your life. You cannot reap unity from discord. You cannot reap holiness from hypocrisy. You cannot reap love from indifference. Matthew 7:16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs of thistles? Job 4 8 says, Even as, and that's a great verse, Job 4 8, even as I have seen they that plow in iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. In other words, you know the principle. It don't matter how you, you think or even how you see yourself, the fact is, what you sow, you will reap. That is a divine principle. And so we need to understand who we are in Christ. And once we understand who we are, then the behavior will follow. We know, we've identified, uh, as we had baptism last, uh, the week before last, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then intentionality. He says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What farmer wants to go out and sow seed, cultivate it, water it, weed it, and pray over it, and not get a harvest? The harvest is what God wants to give each of our, to each of us. He wants you to enjoy a harvest life. God wants to give a harvest in our lives, a harvest in our church. Most people want a harvest, but they don't want to spend any time sowing. In other words, they're not, they just want to float along. They're not even willing to... Follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the fact is, and, and folks, I'm not a brow-beating preacher, and I'm not here to beat anybody up today, but here's the truth. We follow our flesh more than we follow the Spirit. 
in church. We do. We do. If we would follow the Spirit of God, friend, you'd see the fruit of it. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Are y'all listening this morning? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. I tell you, when I see a church that don't show the fruits of the Spirit, I just know that we're not sowing to the Spirit. We're sowing to the flesh. Where there's no love, seeds are sown to the flesh, not in the Spirit. We've got to be intentional. I'm telling you. It's so sparingly, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. If you're not reaping the things that you desire, perhaps you'd better check up and see what you've been sowing. You see, character is the harvest of your habits. Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meant with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's a promise of God. We must be intentional every day in following the Lord Jesus Christ. To follow Him is to reap a life and a harvest of blessing now and forevermore. And that's the next point. Number two, you got to make a decision today, and everybody's going to make a decision here. And don't, don't try to fool yourself. Don't fake this ID, because either you're going to live by the flesh, which will result in corruption, or you're going to live forevermore, which is going to result in life everlasting. Let's look at it. Many are living for time instead of eternity. Eternity is too long to be wrong, as I often like to say. Are you going to live by your flesh or by your faith? Are you going to live according to your flesh? Or are you planning to live like you're going to live forevermore? Life ensnared. Look at verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh, how easy it is to be caught in this trap of the flesh, ensnared. Proverbs 5.22. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. The cords of their sin hold them fast. The book of Galatians is all about freedom, the freedom that we have in Christ. And my favorite verse is Galatians 5.1, where it says this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Are y'all listening? How easy it is to get caught in the snare of the flesh. Every good thing we do strengthens the good that is in us. And every wrong thing makes the wrong in us more dominant. It's how you sow. And it's easy to fall into the trap of sowing to the flesh because it's a natural thing to do, to sow to the flesh. It's easy. Why is it that you have to teach a child to do right and not wrong? It comes natural to do wrong, right? And you already, when you're born, you're born into a trap. You are. We, are. we all have a fallen nature. We've got to acknowledge it. We've got to be honest. And our flesh is weak. But thank God, His Spirit is strong. And greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen? Then life exposed. A lot of people are living foolish lives, and I'm going to show you. Because it says in verse 8, shall the flesh reap corruption. Living life according to the flesh has some serious consequences. Most people don't think so. Sowing our wild oats, so to speak, will be exposed. The Bible says in Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sins will find you out. I'm telling you folks, you're never going to get by with nothing. You never will. Man, I grew up like this. I had a mama that had eyes in the back of her head, the head and the side of her head. I'll tell you, my brother, we grew up on a tobacco farm and we thought we'd try one of those weeds. So we were behind the tobacco barn one day. Uh, let's see, I think uh, I had the match and my brother had the cigarette. He had it in his mouth and I was fixing to light it. And about the time I struck that blooming match, I will never forget, my mama looked around the corner <laughs> and she said, go ahead. I don't know how y'all think about hell, but I knew I was about to get it. <laughs> because all hell was going to come down on me if I struck that match. You think it's hot here today? <laughs> I'm telling you something. My mama was, mm, she's 90, she'll be 91 here in a few months. And I'll tell you something, I still fear her. Uh, uh, by the way, I know you and I may differ on some things. I came up at a different time. But to me, that's the way I learned parenting. I learned to be a daddy. 
through my mama and my daddy. And they didn't let me get by with nothing, and I didn't let my kids get by with nothing. By the way, look up here. Your Father in heaven will not let you get by with nothing. The Bible says you cannot hide from God. Don't even try it. Don't be a fake. Be real and just say, God, I messed up. I've sinned. Because we've all sinned. Amen? What you cover, you might want to write this down. What you cover, he uncovers. What you uncover, he covers with his own blood. I think I'll have a spell right there. I'm telling you, what you uncover, he covers. But what you cover, he uncovers. Or he covers it if you uncover it. If you own up to your sin and say, God, I've sinned, guess what he does? He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you see the dirty glass of water? Well, I'll tell you, when Jesus got into that glass, it got clean. Amen? And see, we see ourselves as a dirty glass, but Jesus comes in and he washes us and makes us whiter than snow. And then uh, life everlasting. Look at the last part. For he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. The believer who walks in the Spirit and sows in the Spirit is going to reap a spiritual harvest. If his sowing has been generous, then the harvest is going to be bountiful. If not in this life, certainly in the life to come. What you sow down here on this earth, you will reap forevermore. Everybody say that word. It's up on the board. Forevermore. Listen, say it again. Forevermore. So I got a question for you, church. Do you want to live according to your flesh and reap corruption? Or do you want to live according to the Spirit and live life forevermore? Amen. I mean, to me, it's a given. Which do you want? I'll tell you, kids, it's easy to make a decision in the flesh. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels good. Let me tell you something about feeling good. Feelings can be deceitful. Amen. You know, sometimes I don't even feel like coming to church, but I don't come to church based on my feelings. I come based on my faith. Amen? I want life everlasting. Some people are scared to death they're going to spend too long in church. We sow to the flesh too much. We think of ourselves too much. We want to feed this middle part too much. I'm preaching to me too. I got a pulpit bumper. I'm telling you, what are we going to sow? Are we going to sow to the flesh? Because however you sow, you will reap bountifully. You will. It, it, it's a principle of God. It will happen. Life everlasting will happen. And you will live somewhere for all eternity, right? But what you sow here, this is the sowing season. We're in the sowing season. But there's a reaping season, and there's a harvest to follow. Last, and I'm done, faith or faithful? Faith or, you know, the Bible says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We've got a faithful God. I'm going to close by asking you, will you be faithful to God? I believe days of persecution are right around the corner. It's easy, you know, to live a fake life comes natural. It's easy to do. Look up here, folks. I really believe with all my heart in my lifetime, and I believe in yours, we're going to see what's real and what's not real. You know why there's, always a, there's already a falling away from the church? Look up here. I'll tell you why. The fakes are falling away. They are. I mean, the least little persecution that comes, they're going to find an exit door. They're out of here. I mean, if somebody came in here with a gun right now and asked you the question, are you a Christian? Because if you stand and say you are, I'm going to kill you. How many of you would really say you're a Christian? Or how many of you would find, I mean, we got a lot of exits. There's two there, there's two here, and there's two back here. Six different exits we can go out of this building. How many of you would be persecuted for the name of Christ? Will you be faithful? Fear or faith? And let us not grow weary in well-doing. 2 Timothy 1.7, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. Worry, fretting, fear will suck the life out of you. The fear or perception of it, how you think of yourself, will rob you of your life. 
Don't allow fear to define or identify your life. Allow your faith to define you. Put your faith in God and your fear will disappear. Be faithful to your faith and stop allowing the devil to give you a lie called a fake ID. Don't fear what man can do to you, the Bible says, but fear God. He's faithful to you. I know Sherry's going to use this in her Sunday school lesson, but I'm just going to rob her of it. <laughs> she told me this morning. And she asked me while we were in the bathroom getting ready. She said, why is it? She's talking about Charles Stanley's message today. Is that, uh, you know, God never gave the Israelites a reason not to trust him. But they didn't trust him. God's never given you and I a reason not to trust him. But we don't trust him. You know why? We live by fear instead of faith. Faith says, I trust God. Fear says, I don't. It's easy to be fearful. But being fearful will, will believe the Satan's lie of being a fake person, really. I mean, being real here is saying, God, I need you. I trust you. I live by faith. I, you've never given me a reason not to trust you. Am I preaching to somebody besides me? Because I'm pointing all fingers back to me, because it's true. Sometimes we live more by fear than we do by faith. And then faint our faith. You see it there in verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We faint and fall from a lack of prayer. And I don't know why God the Holy Spirit put this on my heart, except for the fact that I really believe this church has got great potential to be a great House of prayer. Jesus said, make my house a house of prayer. There's many subjects I could talk about right now. Due to time, I'm just going to talk about one. Jesus said it in Luke 18.1. Man ought to always pray and not faint. Prayer is faith in action. Faith without works is dead. We shall reap if we faint not. We are faking it when we don't pray. Prayer is to the spiritual life what breathing is to the physical life. And if you stop breathing, you're going to faint. You're going to die. There are seasons to the soul just as there are seasons to, the, to nature. And we must give the seed time to take root and bear fruit. We want our prayers answered, but in a microwave time frame. You need to learn to wait on the Lord and not faint. Are you all with me? Right now, right now, right now, right now, we're about to close this service. Are we willing to wait and trust that God is speaking to someone's heart? Oh, right now, right now, right now. Don't be a fake. Let's get real before God. How do you get real before God? You get right before God. We've all feared. We've all fainted. But friend, God has not called us to walk by fear or by fainting, but by faith. Last and I'm done, fake or faith. Fake or faith. As you have therefore opportunity. This is a powerful verse for the church. Let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are the household of faith, talking about the church, the body of believers. As we should not excuse ourselves from any part of our duty, so neither should we grow weary in it. We can do that which is good because the seeds of the Savior have been planted in us. Did you know that? If you're saved today, you got the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ living in you. The best thing that ever happened to you is when Jesus came into your heart. The seeds have been sown through the precious blood. He's washed your sins whiter than snow. Don't live like a fake. Live as a man of faith. What kind of person are you going to be? Are you going to be a fake person or a faith person? It's up to you. It's your choice. We're about to give the invitation. Is it going to be fake or faith? Everybody here today. And you're a fake. You're a fake today if you say, well, I'm not a sinner. You're fooling yourself. Because you are a sinner. Everybody in here is sin. Own up to it. Get real. Some of you have been living maybe on someone else's spiritual coattail. I thought I could do that as a child. You know what I had in my crazy brain as a little boy? My mama was a Christian. My daddy was a Christian. I've inherited Christianity. You can't inherit Christianity, okay? You have to come to the place where you recognize you're a sinner and by faith trust Jesus Christ. For by grace are you say through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You ain't got nothing to boast about. God is not mocked. Be not deceived. Don't be a fake. Put your faith in Jesus today.
I'm telling you, it works. Sow something good in another person's life, and you'll reap a whole harvest of good things to come. Did y'all hear what I just said? I wrote that down so I'd remember it. Because I see what some of you are doing. And I see you sowing good seeds in the other people's life. Look up here. I'm doing, I'm, I, I've got a lot of reasons for saying it without saying everything. When you sow into another person's life, look, look up here. And you're not selfish and you're not filled with your own self-importance. You're thinking of others. Watch out because heaven's fixing to pour out blessings on you. Yeah. That's how it works. It, it don't work the way we think it works. We think, well, if I don't take care of me, nobody else will. Think about giving a hand out to someone who is going through a hard time. They've fallen. How fulfilling it is to help someone who has a legitimate need. I mean, I'm talking about someone that really, they're just, just down, they're discouraged, and we come along and we help that brother. We're not like, you know, the religious crowd, the Levite, the Good Samaritan story. We're, we're to be like the Good Samaritan, to love on somebody. Boy, it really, really hit me hard Wednesday night. I'm standing here at the Lord's Supper table, and I'm thinking, oh, God, I, why didn't I get this message earlier? That our church is a very, very important church in the body of Christ, because if we are not there for these military family, they don't have any family but us. That's why this church better realize, and I use the word better, because God's going to hold you accountable. To whom much is given, much is required. And I'm going to tell you, the blood is going to be on our hands if we can't love Every person that walks through that door, I don't care if they're yellow, brown, black, or white, or green, or yellow. I don't care what the color is. Don't you ever stick your nose up with anybody. Because if it weren't for the grace of God, you'd be on your way to a devil's hell. Amen? Amen. Folks, we better wake up and realize there's not a person here starting with this preacher that's any better than anybody else. We're all the same at the foot of the cross. We've all sinned. That's why I can't get up here and browbeat you and I can't preach down to you because I too have sinned and I too have messed up and I too have had my problems with being prejudiced. Yes, I have. But God, the Holy Spirit, got a hold of my heart. And I decided I'm going to sow in the Spirit and not according to my flesh. Because if I sow to my flesh, I don't like black people. No. Because I grew up as a white man. And I was taught that you don't have nothing to do with those black people. But when Jesus came into my heart, he put a love in my heart for all people. And I don't care about the color of their skin. It don't matter a thing to me. I don't care about your color. All I care about is your heart. Amen. That's all Jesus. Because the Bible says God don't look on the outward appearances. He looks on the heart. Boy, I'm so thankful to be in a church that's multiracial and multicultural. And, you know, from day one of walking in here, I've never felt a hang-up about any of that. Glory to God! That's sowing to the Spirit and not sowing to the flesh. And a church that is all white or all black, they might have some problems because I think we all are loved by God. I really do. For God so loved the world. Not just a few of us, but God loves us all. So guess what? We got to love them all. I'm on YouTube, and I'm, these people are watching me right now. I want to say this. I love the homosexual and the transgender. I personally think they got their identity mixed up, but I know the one who can take care of that. I, I, I really believe the identity is right here in Scripture that, that I was so, I was, I was the, listen to me, I'm going somewhere. I'm not to be a fake. I'm to be a man of faith that God made me just the way I am. And, and you know what? I don't need to apologize for it. But I do need to, I need to repent if I'm a fake. I just need to say, you know what? Warts and all, this is what you get. You know, and by the way, it works both ways. I don't know what it is about church. We have a higher expectation from people in church than we do anywhere else. The church is simply people. And we all have been fakes. But thank God, by the faith that we put in the Lord Jesus Christ, He takes the wrong and makes it right. Amen. He cleanses us from all sins. So do you have a fake ID or do you have a faith ID? Would you bow your head? Do you have a fake ID or do you have a faith ID? Now, I know everybody here would say, oh, yeah, I got a faith ID. 
Well, faith without works is dead. So I'm going to ask you to to do something. Get real today. Just get real. Just get real right where you are and just say to, the, say, say to yourself, I've been faking it. I've been thinking that I could live my life my way and I'd get by with things. But I've heard this message today, if you're sowed to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. I'm going to ask every person here to be very reverent at this invitation. Could we make up our mind what we're going to do and sow to the Spirit? We're going to sing that song, I Have Decided, it's an old song, to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, don't depend on anyone else's faith. Don't live on anyone else's spiritual coattail. You put your faith in Jesus Christ, and I promise you, your faith works just as good as my faith. It does, because it's who you put your faith in. Would you put your faith in Jesus today? That's the invitation. Don't live with a fake ID. Live with a faith ID. And I promise you on the authority of his word that Jesus is real. And he is the only one who can please the holy God. And if you'll let Jesus Christ come into your life by faith, he'll save you today. For by grace you're saved through faith. That not of yourselves, not of your flesh. It's not of you that saves you, but it's the gift of God through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that everyone in the sound of my voice will make up their mind. That they will decide today who they're going to follow. You said, if any man follow me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. I don't want people following Ronnie Stewart. I really don't. I don't want people following our deacons. I don't want nobody following a Sunday school teacher. I want everybody to follow Jesus. And if we are following Jesus, we're going to be building up the body of Christ. We're going to be working together for your glory. So, Father, today I pray that we'll make up our mind who we're going to follow. I've decided to follow Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.